Dr. Tyson, I want to get into, you know, our exploration of the universe, which is part of the one of the biggest themes in Stereo Messenger. And a mind-boggling idea also was that when we landed on the moon, we discovered the Earth for the first time. That was just such a really good way of putting it. And I have one concern that I wanted to get to ask you is that, you know, we're driving into space exploration with SpaceX and with NASA. And there seems to be, you know, part of the conversation that going to space will increase our, all of our resources because they're infinite resources, like gold, even alcohol. Right, right. Yeah. Like alcohol. We can even create a drink, a new tequila with, <laughs> no. And my question here for you is how can we ensure that the exploration of the universe is driven by the genuine curiosity for knowledge, for inner growth, for exploration of the universe itself, rather than solely the pursuit of profit and greed and other deceiving motives? Is that possible? So you have value judged those th those categories. I'm going to repeat them, but I'm not going to value judge them. So I'm going to say that what motivates people to go into space can be many different things. It could be just pure exploration. It could be economic. It could be geopolitical. It could be militaristic. It could be any of these. I'm not going to prejudge why anyone should or should not go into space when space is fundamentally Earth's backyard. Did, if you were moved into a new home and there's a backyard and you're a kid, do you, did you have to specify where you're going to play in the backyard? It's just a backyard. You go explore, have fun. So uh, different investments will return differently to our economy. Uh, di different returns on investments will affect our economy in different ways. But in my experience, the pure urge to explore has never been enough of a driver to do very expensive things. So... Uh, generally, money and war are much bigger drivers than uh, exploration, the purity of exploration. On that note, there's... I, I, I don't know if you're familiar with Eric Weinstein. Eric Weinstein, yes. he he's also... I, I would love to have him on the show too because he discusses that... He has an argument on having us become an interplanetary species, which for him, it would serve as a hedge with the increasing petty conflicts that we're having, such as the Ru Russia-Ukraine war. And also the godlike powers that we seem to be acquiring with the rising of the nuclear bombs and the nuclear energy. And he says that our wisdom has not progressed as much as our godlike powers. Do you believe that this argument of hedging our possibly catastrophic wars or even a natural disaster or an asteroid hitting us, hopefully, well, you, you mentioned that Tyson will never hit us, mm -hmm. but... I, yeah, don't blame my asteroid. <laughs> but maybe other one. Do you think that that's a good argument to, to double down on our interplanetary species endeavors? So couple of points there. Many people who think of finding Earth Plan B, right, Earth 2.0, they do so because they're worried that we might trash the Earth, Earth will become uninhabitable, there's an asteroid that would take us out, there'd be some blight. So that's what's motivating it, in part, but in large measure. But I see it differently than that. I see it as whatever it takes to reverse global climate change or to combat the virus or whatever that takes, it seems to me it's less effort than finding another planet, terraforming it, and shipping a billion people there. I'm just thinking. That's just me. So in the film Interstellar, there was a blight on the crops that killed them all and everyone was starving. So they 
tried to went through a wormhole to try to find another planet in which to ship people rather than just fix the problem on earth if you have the power to power of geoengineering to terraform mars into earth then you have the power of geoengineering to turn earth back into earth so this idea of being multi-planet species just to hedge the bets if an asteroid's coming deflect the asteroid whatever it takes to terraform a planet and ship a billion people there seems to me would be less than deflecting the asteroid so i cannot embrace the apocalyptic scenarios as the primary driver for our presence on mars and I, I agree with that with your ideas that it seems that the effort of of shipping people, you know, to an exoplanet is just quite a lot and it could cost way less and also it would be more feasible to just realize the, the preciousness that is Earth and you know, it, it also it kind of implies that Earth is a failed project, no? Trying to, to go <laughs> somewhere else. Well that it, or it might fail one day, yeah. Or that it might fail. And It's, I agree, I agree with that.